So hopefully you've had a chance to try this exercise. So it says up here it's an example of an SN2 reaction. So when you see it's an example of an SN2 reaction, you should be thinking about where's the nucleophile, where's it going to attack, where's the leaving group, and you should be remembering that the nucleophile will attack at the same time as the leaving group departs through a transition state. So specifically for this exercise, you had to identify the nucleophile, the electrophilic centre and the leaving group in the first step of the above scheme. So the first step, this is the first step, so we're thinking about for this species, where's the nucleophile, where's the electrophilic centre and where is the leaving group. Now I tried to give you a hint by drawing a very large lone pair of electrons here. So a nucleophile, remember, is something which is electron rich. The electrophilic centre, that's the electrophile, that's obviously going to be electron deficient, electron poor. The leaving group is something which can depart and take the electrons with it. So the electron rich area is going to be here, it's going to be the nitrogen with the lone pair of electrons. So let's just try and highlight this. This here is going to be our nucleophile. So what we then have to do is work out where is the leaving group and where is our electrophilic centre. Well, if we were to look at the molecule, you know, we've got carbon, carbon, we've got halogen, chlorine. So this is going to be our leaving group. This is polarising the bond so that the electrons um, are going to get pulled towards the chlorine. It could also be this one. This is a symmetrical molecule. So this bottom part is exactly the same as the top part. So if you had picked out this one or if you picked out that one, both are correct. But I'm just going to go with this one. So this here is going to be our leaving group. Let's just call it LG. So then the electrophilic centre, that's the last thing we're looking for. So because this is the leaving group and it's polarising, what you find, let's do it in a different colour, this is going to be polarised, this is going to be slightly positive, that's going to be slightly negative, just by virtue of the electronegativity difference between the chlorine and the carbon. So this part here, which is slightly positive, that is going to be our electrophilic centre. So let's highlight that as our electrophilic centre. So what is our arrow going to be? It doesn't actually ask for that. It just asks you to identify the nucleophile, which we've done, the electrophilic centre, which we've done, the delta plus carbon, and the leaving group, which we've done, the chlorine. But just, um, you know, you could also be asked for mechanisms. So let's just draw the mechanism for this. What I'm going to do, rather than confuse it all up there, let's just draw out the molecule, exactly the same molecule, but We've annotated that one, so it's getting a bit cluttered. So let's draw the arrows. The arrows go from the high electron density onto the low electron density, so that was our delta plus centre, at the same time as we lose our leaving group. So that would be the reaction mechanism that we draw. To give us this intermediate here, so notice we've got a nitrogen, we've got a methyl, we've got the bottom chain the same, but what we've now done is we formed a bond between this nitrogen and here. So that gives us a one, two, three membered ring. A one, two, three membered ring. The nitrogen lost its lone pair of electrons, so it's become positive. We've also got up here Cl minus because we broke that off. Now, the reason I chose this example is because, again, this is very relevant in drug design and discovery. So these molecules um, have been used extensively in anti-cancer therapies because these molecules are really quite reactive because you've got the nucleophile and the leaving group within the same molecule it will form this species very readily and these have been found to actually interact with DNA in such a way that the DNA can no longer unwind you can't then get the sort of transcription process going on and if this happens selectively in tumours, then you've got an effective anti-cancer therapy. So these are called nitrogen mustards. You don't specifically need to know the name of them. But if you ever come across in your studies nitrogen mustards, this is what they are. 
and they are effective anti-cancer agents because they form these very reactive intermediates from the drug. This can then interact with the different strands of the DNA in the tumour, stop it from being able to unwind and the whole sort of transcription process. And so it effectively stops the DNA replicating in the tumour, giving you an effective anti-cancer agent.